Hi everyone, James Bernard from Propellerhead Software here, and welcome to week two of Reason and Record Tips. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you how to create a dubstep wobble bass sound using Reason and Record. Of course, if you only have Reason, you could still follow along, because a lot of the procedures that I'm going through here are applicable to Reason as well. If you're not familiar with what a dubstep wobble bass sounds like, it sounds kind of like this. Alright, so following along, it's that bass sound that's doing all that movement and that change in timbre along with the beat. So, let's talk a little bit about the basics of what a dubstep wobble bass does. Um, usually there's two parameters that you can hear that are being changed on a wobble bass, and most commonly it's the filter. So if you have a low pass, band pass, or a high pass filter, it's opening and closing the frequency, that filter. And normally you use an LFO. To do that because LFOs when they're synced to MIDI can be changed to different timings and you can get uh, triplets, sixteenth, eighths, things like that. Um, the other parameter sometimes I hear is being a change in volume. So actually making, changing the amp. So you know basically taking the sound and making it louder or softer using a wobble type. Um, what we're going to do here is it's, let's go in and start from scratch. I'm going to create a Thor and we're going to initialize this Thor patch and for our purposes, I'm just going to take that same note melody that I played there. We'll mute the drums and just listen to that. And we'll just look at the rack. So there's our initialized Thor. It's a saw wave. And we'll take off the envelope and velocity control of the filter. And we'll give it some drive. And we're going to give it another oscillator. Take oscillator 2, make that analog as well go up an octave above, add that, and we're going to take both of these and change them to a pulse wave, and we're going to go to 64 in the pulse width, give it that nice square, okay, so now as you're listening to that play back, you can hear that if I move that frequency up and down, you kind of get what that wobble bass sound is, but that's not really the way we want to do it, right? So let's go to use LFO 1 here, and we're going to turn on key sync and tempo sync. The reason you turn on key sync is so that every time that you hit a key on the keyboard, it re-triggers the start of the LFO waveform. Tempo sync, we want it to sync to tempo, obviously. So now we're going to go down here to our modulation matrix, and we're going to take source, select LFO 1, and destination is going to be filter 1 frequency and we're going to give it a value of 100 and let's change our rate to something let's say like eighth note triplets and we'll turn our frequency down a bit so it's really pronounced and listen back so you can hear right away, there's your wobble. It's a little fast, so as the track's playing back, I might do something like this. And of course that could have been recorded, so if I hit record... And you'll see that right away that knob indicates that there's automation, and right here on the track you can see that automation. Now, that's one way that you can go about creating wobble based sounds and automating the rate and having it change and morph as the time goes on. But there's actually another way that we can do that, and I'll touch on it briefly now, and then what I'll do with next week's episode is we'll actually go in depth on how I did this patch. So if you look right back up here at the initial patch that you heard when you heard the song, let's see, just mute this out and listen to that initial patch. Now if you look there, you can see there's no automation that's been recorded on that lane, so how is it changing wobble speed? Well, when we look at it, it's a comedy that I've made, and I see here that I have knob 1, which is assigned to select the wobble speed, like I would have been doing down here on the rate knob, but it's turned all the way to the left. 
So if I open this up and look at the devices, what you'll see here is that Thor number two, I'm using, I've got two Thors in this patch, I'm using Thor number two step sequencer and curve one on the step sequencer with specified knob changes. And I'm taking the output of that, I routed that out to a CV output, which is then directly connected to the CV input of this knob. So essentially what's happening is this sequencer right here is turning that knob for me. But I've set it so that it happens, if you look here in the modula modulation matrix, every time I hit a key on the keyboard, it will then trigger the next step in the sequencer. And I've got the type of sequence set to random. So when you listen back and look at what's going on here, you see it's randomly selecting one of those steps. So it's a real fun way of doing something and making it organic. The cool thing about doing it this way is that you're never going to hear the same step twice, right? It's always going to be jumping around and, and sometimes you may get some unexpected results and some really cool patterns. Um, there's a lot more going on in this patch. As you can see, I'm using FM and different filters. There's a lot more going on with the wobble than just filter. So what I'm going to do is next week, let's check back in and I'll go in a little more depth on some other things that you can do when creating wobble-based sounds. Um, maybe doing some things with changing the timbre of the sound as opposed to just the filter. All right, so that's it for now. So tune in next week for week number three, and we'll cover part B of dubstep wobble bass sounds. Thanks again. I'm James Bernard.